Silver Surfer was a comic book superhero, fully coated in silver that traveled on a surfboard at the speed of light to take down evil forces. He had his own comic in the 60s and actually started off as a side character in the Fantastic Four series. The comic had two stints, the second one starting in 1987 that lasted until 1998. So somewhere in between all that, 1990 to be exact, Arcadia Systems released the NES incarnation of Silver Surfer. The story is pretty cliché. Your Silver Surfer, who has been summoned by Galactus to stop the evil forces of the Magic Domain, or else the entire universe will be destroyed. Why the bad guys always want to kill everyone is beyond me. Wouldn't they be destroyed too if all life depends on this? I guess they only want to destroy our universe since these attacks are coming from beyond, but whatever, there's no reason to dissect the story too much. Your objective is to retrieve the cosmic device to save the world, but you have to find the pieces individually. They're scattered throughout five levels, each of which is guarded by a certain boss. You can choose which stage you want to go to in any order, like in Mega Man. The big difference is unlike in Mega Man or Bucky O'Hare, you don't retrieve any kind of special weapon or unlockable character or anything after clearing a stage. So it really doesn't matter what order you choose, it'll just put the five pieces together the same way anyway. The game is an auto-scrolling shoot-em-up, sometimes in side-scrolling fashion, sometimes overhead. But either way, you're going to be constantly shooting and constantly dying because one hit kills you and everything on the screen pretty much kills you. And some of it just should not kill you. The walls, for example, should just block your path like they would in other games where the screen auto scrolls, but not Silver Surfer. Nah, this game intentionally takes difficulty to a whole nother level. It's absolutely fucking insane. You can move freely around the screen and the controls are pretty good, but that doesn't make up for it all that much because not only does every single platform kill you upon contact, but there is usually a shitload of enemies on the screen at one time. And since the screen auto scrolls, you can't take your time or move at your own pace. You have to constantly react. And a lot of these spots are death traps that require trial and error. In a game like this, you deserve a life bar with some recovery time. Instead, you bump your head on the ceiling, fall off your board and cry like a bitch. It's no easier in the overhead view because your surfboard is like 9 feet long and if it touches anything you're all done. Each stage is broken off into 3 sections and there are checkpoints in each, which at least the game designers had the compassion to include when they really could have been assholes and just have you stop from the beginning. They also give you the option to continue after losing all 5 lives, but you have to start at the beginning of the level you just died on, you don't go back to the select screen, and you only get 4 continues. There are power ups that upgrade your gun. One of them is this silver ball that gives you an additional gun that you can toggle the direction you're firing to either down, behind you, or straight ahead with the regular gun. It helps to take out enemies coming from both sides, but switching off while aiming while trying to dodge everything isn't too easy to do all at once. And it's not often you'll find downtime to safely make these transitions. Your best bet for survival is to build up your gun with upgrades. The only problem is that once you die, only once, even at a checkpoint, you'll be downgraded all the way back to the first gun. What a bullshit trick that is. To get the weapons that you really need in order to survive, you have to survive without it for a while. The F icons will upgrade your attacks, and the B icons will give you a bomb that lets you destroy every enemy on the screen by pressing the select button. You only have one to start with, and you don't see them lying around everywhere, so be sure to use it when you really need it. The graphics are pretty decent, but they don't really do a good job of distinguishing what's background and what kills you. One thing that the game did get right is the soundtrack. It's energetic, eccentric, and it never stays in one spot for too long. You can tell there was a strong effort put into it. Now if only they could put half of that effort into the game. Another option you have is an alternating two player mode, just in case you want to share the pain with someone else. Now like I said before, the order of the stages you select doesn't make a difference, but for this walkthrough I'll just go through the select screen clockwise starting with the level the cursor starts off on, Reptile. You'll start out with an option to take the top or lower portion. Believe me, you're going to want to take the low road here. Keep yourself in a constant state of firing, taking out all the fish that sometimes fly out of the water and these reptilian creatures with guns. You want to keep a good distance from them so you can get enough hits on them, but don't stay too far to the left or you'll get jumped from behind. Instead, take this little nook up here to let them pass by or take them out with the backwards shot if you're good with toggling your second weapon. 
as you should have the second gun at this point. Be careful when squeezing your way between these walls. This little hanging thing will kill you and you have to blast through this green wall. These frogs will hang onto this lamppost sticking its tongue out at you. You can't kill it so just wait for the tongue to get out of the way before passing by it. Also the lampposts themselves will kill you. The mini boss of this section is this green lizard you've seen throughout the level with some other minions helping out. Stay up high but just low enough to sneak under his gunshots and level yourself with the flying fish at the same time. The second section is overhead and it's a constant button masher of shooting and dodging. These cannons fire one shot each and aren't too difficult to deal with. These guns fire off a missile that splits into two, so get in between them if you're far away, otherwise dodge to the side or shoot down before it has a chance to fire. These purple guns will fire two shots at a time in any direction, and they're usually set up with another nearby, so get these off the screen as soon as you can. But the biggest pain in the ass in this section is this red ball thing. If you shoot it, it multiplies and floats around in large circles, so you definitely do not want to shoot it or you're in trouble, although this one right here is actually a decoy covering up a power up. Once you start seeing the turtles floating around, you'll know you're near the mini boss, a giant devil turtle. Just stay as low as you can and fire constantly. If your weapon is at a low grade, you'll probably have to do some maneuvering to the opposite side the little turtles come from, but you'll still want to stay as low as possible. Section 3 is back to the side scrolling view. There'll be large red fish underwater and flying green bats above. They come from both sides so stay in the middle so you can move to any direction away from the closest enemy until you get to the boss, Reptile. He'll spit balls at you and there'll be either a fish down below or a bat up above. Dodge either up or down whichever side doesn't have an enemy occupying it. And then when you come back to the middle, fire as many shots to its head as you can. Repeat this process until it's dead and you'll get the first piece of the device. Next stage belongs to the Fire Lord. The first section is an overhead view and what really sucks is you're only allowed to ride it along the fire river. You can't touch the sides or you're dead. Thankfully you won't be dealing with projectiles, the enemies just throw themselves at you or just get in your way, as is the case of these hands that pop out of the river. Shooting everything isn't so much the problem, it's shooting everything while keeping your eye on your position so you don't collide with the sides. There's no boss in this section so on to section 2. There's these guys are spitting out balls of lava into the air. If there's a pair of them together, move in right after the first one goes by, then wait above it momentarily before quickly moving ahead right after the next one goes by. You have to act fast as these spurt out at a rapid rate. Right before this lava pit, back up to let these fire sickles fall from the ceiling in front of you before moving on. Stand as far back as you can when dealing with these pumpkins that come out of the ground so you don't get tagged by one of them. If you want to get this power up down here, wait in the nook for the falling fire to come down and then quickly make your way back up or you'll get caught. These demon skulls drool lava, so move your way between them when there's a gap, but make your way toward the ceiling as soon as you get past the third skull or these pumpkin fucks will pop out and take you out. Then there's this entourage of falling fire droplets. Wait for the right moment to dart your way across when there's just enough room, or if you have a powerful enough gun, you can just wipe them out in front of you and pass right through. When you get up here, stay as high as you can possibly get as a lot of these annoying pumpkins will show up. Shoot these green bastards that drool out lava, but keep in mind that you can't surf through their carcasses or you'll die. How cheap is that shit? The mini boss of this section is a series of these goddamn pumpkins, although they're actually jack-o'-lanterns technically. You can kill as many of these jack-o'-lanterns as you want, but the one you have to kill is the one in the middle up here. All the rest of them are just drones that don't matter. This one right here must be the queen. Line yourself up with it and shoot it down while shimmying up and down to avoid its projectiles and all the others that try to fly right into you. Section 3 is a narrow corridor with a bunch of flaming obstacles that pop up. Just keep yourself away from the ceiling and floor and shoot constantly. Soon you'll meet up with the boss, the Fire Lord, who has flaming bird minions coming out of the fire down below and he's shooting flaming sperm out of his flaming dick. What you want to do is destroy the fire that the birds are coming from which will eliminate them completely, leaving you to worry only about the Fire Lord. Line yourself up right here so you can hit him and take out any sperm that might get in the way and you'll have a decent space around you to dodge any of its projectiles. After taking him out, you'll get the second piece of the device. 